Good evening. Welcome to Vibin' with Ashley Live. Tonight, episode 61. I'm your host, Ashley Live. We have an incredible show for you this evening. Tonight, we have singer, songwriter, and actor Brandon Shawell, and he actually just joined the chat, so I am going to bring him on in the room. So Brandon, whenever you're ready, feel free to join the chat, and we're going to make this happen. Good evening, everyone. Brandon was also on the very first season of X Factor. So he was on X Factor as well as season 13 of The Voice. And there is Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Hey, Ashley, what's up? What's up, what's up? Not, not too much. How's your night going? Oh, that's good. I can't complain. Just had a little bit of pizza, so hopefully, uh, Ooh. you know. I can't, can't complain about that. I love pizza. Pizza's the way to go. What do you yeah. like? Well, I mean, if I'm, like, really having a good day, I, I kind of put the works on it. So I'll put, like, pepperoni, jalapenos, and stuff like that. But I just had cheese pizza tonight. So kind of <laughs> keeping, it, keeping it simple, you know? <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with cheese pizza. <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. So I was introducing you to the room right before you got in. So Brandon, I actually start each show with a song lyric. And because your first EP came out in December, I used a song lyric from one of your songs. Uh-oh, okay. So I'm share it with the room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are my motivation. You are my lifeline. You are why I'll never stop. You are, you are my dream. And that is from Brandon's song, Dream, from his EP scripted that came out in December. So Brandon, do you want to shed some light on that particular song from the album? Yeah. So it's kind of a double entendre. So the dream being um, my family, um, you know, my loved ones, my friends, the people that keep me motivated. Mm -hmm. um, but my dream also being my passion for music and um, being able to, uh, you know, reach reach the level of success um, in the life that I want to have in that. So mm -hmm. the dream being my uh, music, and that's the reason that, that's my motivation, that's what's keeping me going, as well as my family being the dream, so. I love that. It's such a beautiful song, and I love that because I actually thought it was about a person. But, oh, cool. but for you to say, like, it's about music, I'm like, it just means that much more because when music is a passion in your life, and it's in every breath you take. It's just such a magical experience. For sure, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. So it's March and it's the last day of Women's History Month. Tell us about a woman in your life who inspires you. Cool, um, so I have two, <laughs> that's all right. Um, no, it's so, fine. <laughs> yeah, so first, uh, definitely my wife. Uh, my uh -huh. wife and I, um, you know, we've been together since uh, 2010. So uh, we got like, yeah, we got some, some time together yeah. and like we met as kids, but just to like kind of see her growth and <clears throat> now the both of us are actually expecting our first and just like seeing her strength as yeah. a woman definitely inspires me every day. And then the second would definitely be my mom, um, mm -hmm. you know, just growing up and kind of seeing her ambition and how passionate she was about my brothers and I and just making sure that um, she just instilled value in us. Mm -hmm. And then even today, just kind of seeing her grind and um, how just like calm she can be like in certain situations, definitely just like uh, a motivation for me. So both of them, for sure. Yeah. And it's so important to have strong women in your life because women are just everything. Like, yeah. th like, it doesn't matter who you are in life. Like a woman put you here, like a woman gave you life and a woman is like strong and powerful and girl power. Yeah. <laughs> I agree completely, 100%. <laughs> so bring us back to the beginning, your childhood. Who inspired you to get into music, and how old were you? So um, I actually got interested in music in elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, didn't know that I loved it. I was going to love it this way. But yeah. um, I got into it, and like, you know, you have music class, and you're kind of just banging on boxes and, like, jingling yep. little bells and stuff like that. And um, yeah. my course teacher actually kind of saw something there and she's like um okay so you're gonna join course and i'm like okay all right cool 
So um, when I was actually old enough to join course, I think it was like third grade or something like that. So what are we like seven, seven years old, six, seven years old. Mm -hmm. um, that's really where I said, okay, cool. Like I can hear different parts in, you know, in the ensemble or, you know, just being able to pick up on certain things. And I, that's where I want it to be. Like, yeah. um, and I, I, I hadn't really felt that um, type of like love or passion um, for anything yet. So I kind of knew that something was stirring there mm -hmm. and just kind of took it and ran with it. Also, just letting you guys know my light is going crazy in here. So if you see it, like, go off and on. I promise that the electricity is pumping in here, but... <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> worries. I don't know what's going on. It's been going crazy. All good. All good. <laughs> I love that your teacher saw something in you, especially the young age, because, I mean, you're also a teacher. So I think <clears throat> when you teach kids, it's so powerful. Like, yeah. how old are the kids that you teach? So, so actually... Um, I'm actually not in the classroom currently anymore. I, um, my position is on at the headquarters. So I um, am able to work directly with principals, assistant principals, teachers, and I train them. Yeah. Um, but before, when I was in the classroom, which was about uh, three years ago, mm -hmm. I was a seventh grade teacher. So I was working with about 12, 13 year olds. Yeah. Awesome. And that's because when I think of some of my teachers from grade school, I'm like, oh yeah, my fourth grade teacher, she said this to me. Or yes. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's awesome that a that a, a teacher said to you, "Oh, you're coming to chorus." <laughs> yeah, I have something in you. Yeah, and you're right. You don't forget that teacher. Like I, you know, uh, her name was Miss White. I'll never forget Miss White. Yeah. Like you know, and that day, and it is, and it kind of stuck with me when I was in the classroom. You got to be more observant. It's not just all about A's and B's and stuff like that. But right. what do you see in this child, and maybe you can take something and. Um, increase their confidence in it, and you never know where to take them. So, yeah, that's a pretty special thing. And confidence in kids is so important because they may not be getting something at home, but a teacher can say something to a kid, and it sticks with them for their entire life. Like, yeah, yeah teacher in second grade, and she said that I was good at this, and that teachers are so powerful. They are. They are. <laughs> yes. How would you describe the music that you create? So I really like to tell a story and mm -hmm. the music that I create. Um, I, I have fun every now and then. So I write with different people. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, um, um, the guys in the group group that I was in uh, when I was on the X Factor, um, yeah. the four of us get together every now and then really virtually and like we'll write together. And that's kind of my space to like explore different outlets in different direction. Mm -hmm. um, but when I'm writing for myself, I really want to tell a story. And um, crazy enough, um, the whole EP is about my um, journey in music, but mm -hmm. I did it through the lens of relationships. So I just, Ooh. yeah. So I never, I never kind of want to just be like straight on about anything. I want to kind of get people thinking and to really listen in on what I'm writing and um, to get the story. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Walk us through your creative process. So I have, um, I've gone through, you know, um, a, a few, you know, different paths as far as like building my creative team. Mm -hmm. And um, when it comes time to start, you know, kind of creating new music, um, which is I'm in the process of doing now, yeah. uh, we kind of just figure out like where I am. What do you want to talk about? What's going on around you? Um, and not necessarily kind of putting yourself in a box and, you mm -hmm. know, repeating what's, have, what's already been heard. Right. Uh, so once we kind of establish that and I, I get like, I want this to be a feel good type of album or I want this to, you know, be a, a full blown mixture of things. Uh, from there, uh, we'll have a few sessions where we bounce ideas all, all around. Mm -hmm. I'll work with a, a few producers who will just uh, uh, give me different, you know, um, instrument instrumentals or I'll clunk out a few chords and uh, do that that way. Or I'll kind of like. Um, like do a voice memo of myself singing a few lyrics that kind of come to mind, send it over to the producer and we start working around it. So mm -hmm. there's a few, there's a few ways that, um, you know, I work creatively and I never want it to be like, so um, I never want it to be like, so formulated. I really want it to kind of come out organically. And yeah. just kind of flow. So that's <laughs> always the best, best approach for me. Yeah. So you said voice memos. Do you have like 400 voice memos? <laughs> What kind of, or are you writing things down or a little bit of both? Yeah, I'm a little bit of both. I'm like old school with like writing, but I also will like type out lyrics in my notes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the voice memos definitely like uh, draft one, sketch two, two or three, or 
you know, there's like a thousand versions of the songs that I made it to the EP. Right. Um, and it's kind of funny to go back and listen to where it started and then mm -hmm. hear where it ended. So, yeah. Do you have voice memos in your phone that aren't songs yet that could potentially come down the line? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Cool. Good yeah. stuff. <laughs> so you touched on for sure. Let's talk about the formation of that group and why you guys start, decided to start a music group. Yeah, those are my those are my guys. Those are my brothers. Um, so crazy enough, in high school, uh, I was just again I, I was a chorus nerd, a music nerd, um, and I uh, had a friend named Jesse, who the two of us went to a dance academy in middle school, mm -hmm. and we had stayed in touch. And uh, Jesse went to the arts academy. I'm from Virginia Beach originally, so mm -hmm. there's eleven academies high school wise in Virginia Beach. Okay, I went to the technology academy. And then my, uh, my friend Jesse went to the Arts Academy. Mm -hmm. So um, with that, him and two other friends, um, well, actually three other friends started to form a group because we had something that was called Beach Street USA down mm -hmm. at the ocean front, where they had like just raw talent on the streets. They put you on this box. You get up there and you kind of do your thing. Yeah. Um, so the, the four of them, not including me, went and auditioned for this uh, Beach Street USA mm -hmm. and were selected to be a talent for the summer. Mm -hmm. Literally right after they were selected, one of the guys uh, was going to graduate. He was a little older than us, graduate and go into the military. So he's like, I'm sorry, this is fun, but I got to go. Yeah. So they were one man down. Jesse's right. like, I got a guy. Let's bring him over. You guys meet him, test him out, see if it work. And um, it was kind of crazy. Like I went in, um, I didn't know the other two guys yet, but I like met them and just instantly we just bonded and connected. They listened to me sing and they're like, judging me a little bit and um it just kind of like it kind of worked i was the youngest person in the group so i kind of like learned a lot from them mm -hmm. and um yeah that's kind of that was the beginning of uh, for sure mm -hmm. yeah. and then you were on the first season of x factor so you became this group and then you went on x factor bring us back to that moment in time yeah i love, I love this story because it just it really does bring back memories but we were just four young guys um and we had actually continued to do that beach gig. It for sure literally started out as a fun group, um, just the four of us who loved to sing and hang out and yeah. wanted to make a little bit of money on the side in the summer at the beach. Um, so when we uh, kept going, I think we were maybe like three, three summers in, it was just a summer thing. Yeah. Um, the show X Factor was, start, was gonna come over to the US from the UK. Right. And. Um, you know, we saw the name Simon Cow, and they kind of started promoting this show. And, you know, we're like, what is this show? But it was something unique about it because they allowed groups, which, yeah. you know, most shows don't. Mm -hmm. So we're all, like, you know, separated. It was, like, the first summer that we didn't do Beach Street. This light is going crazy. It's and okay. um, so, yeah. So it was the first summer we didn't do Beach Street. And uh, one of the group members, Darius, uh, he's like, hey, so just letting you guys know, I submitted a tape of us. And we're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, what did we you didn't do? know, like, <laughs> you didn't tell us. And um, crazy enough, we, were, we had all been so busy that summer, the producers of the show had literally been uh, Facebook messaging us for two weeks trying to reach us, saying, like, wow. we want you guys to come, audition, please respond to us, get back to us, please. Amazing. Um, so, yeah, so literally once we realized that, the four of us got on the phone, and the producers needed us to fly out to Seattle in like two days. Mm -hmm. um, keep in mind, so at this point, we're all college students, we're like broke, and yeah. we don't know still, you know, how we can make this work. Um, and this is where, why it's important to have like a strong village around you, because we were able to pull together, um, get, you know, get friends and family to like throw us some money. Yeah. And literally all of us met in Seattle, um, rehearsed all night. And the cool thing about our journey with it was that we were able to kind of skip over all of the different um, auditions and mm -hmm. then put us straight in front of the judges. That's so, awesome. Yeah, but with the X Factor, you're performing in a stadium full of people. That's the real deal. And you got the four judges there in front of you. And again, we hadn't sang with each other in about a year. So wow. it was like like very crazy. And um, we did we did well on the, on the X Factor. And that kind of, uh, kind of jump-started things for me uh, in my career starting with for sure and then going further and going beyond so yeah mm -hmm. so you've covered songs by maxwell boys to men sam smith and charlie puth is one of your favorite 
artists. Mm -hmm. So what about these musicians inspire you? Um, yeah, and actually, Charlie Puth, uh, I bought tickets to his concert tonight, by the way. Um, he's having like a virtual concert. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> if, I, like, okay. if, I meet, if I meet Charlie Puth, there's like, I have yeah. a joke I call it fangirling. Um, oh. there's, a couple, there's a couple of artists that I'm going to fangirl over. And, like, probably, like, <laughs> Wait, who are, who are they though? <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely Charlie Puth's on the list. Just because he's just like a, a very like brilliant musician. I appreciate musicianship um, yeah. along with an artist. But um, Brian McKnight is one of those people. Usher is one of those people. There's a few that have like they have a top five as far as fangirling. Oh, <laughs> but, I, love, um, I love that though. I yeah, love that. Yeah. You're just like, and then you think of those musicians, and they have these incredible careers and songwriting yeah. and collaborations, and the, their music stands the test of time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're making they're making classics that will never go away. So exactly. um, for me, you know, uh, with looking at like what. I love about these artists is that they, like you just said, they have such a um, great catalog of music. Right. And I know that I can go up there and lis listen to an, uh, an album fully through of these, these people that you just named. Yeah. Or, um, you know, I don't know. I know I have wanted to learn more about them as a person mm -hmm. simply because the music that they created um, has kind of touched me and inspired me in that way. Right. Um, and that, I think that that in particular is special when you can pull people into who you are as a person and not just like turn on a song and like just kind of dance to a beat. Um, that's when you really grab the people and they're going to stick with you for years. So I'm not going anywhere with these people that you just listed. <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you mean by that because that's why I developed this show is because there's so many great musicians, right? But it's like, who is that person? Like, why, why are they on this journey? Like, what motivates them? Like, what is their why? And that's, yeah. and it just, you hit the nail right on the head because it's like, there's so many incredible musicians. But some of these people, like, they don't do interviews. They don't have documentary. Right. Right? Yeah. They're, just, they're just this voice. And you're like, well, you're great. But like, who are you underneath all that? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yep. So what other musicians inspire you? So yeah, so um, man, there's so many. So I'm gonna kind of start like old school and then bring yeah. it up to current. So um, not to be cliche, but definitely Michael Jackson. Um, just you know, listening to his brilliance and like creativity and being able to kind of like shape a way for himself. Yeah. Um, seeing how he started out in a group and then going as a solo artist, definitely a connection there. Um, I would say like a Stevie Wonder, mm -hmm. um, and then like just pure voice like. I have to say Luther Vandross. So mm -hmm. I know I'm like kind of sitting in a place of like pop and R&B and there's a bit of a, a trend there. Right. Um, that's literally like kind of where um, my love is. So then like going from there, I would say like Usher, Brian McKnight. Um, and then like current day artist, I really, um, I do like, I do like Charlie Puth. I know I have mentioned that before, but um, uh, also like Boys to Men, like there's just a lot of artists. And then don't even get me started. I know we were talking about Women's Day, but don't even get me started on like women artists because they can like get on the list as well. So yeah, uh, there's a lot. There's definitely a lot. Uh -huh. yeah. Who would you like to collaborate with? Oof. Um, so I, I, I really want to collaborate with well-known artists and producers from Virginia Beach. Yeah. So I want to pull back like Timberland. I want to pull back like Missy Elliott, Pharrell and kind of like get that going again. There's so much talent that comes out of the area. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I really think that needs to be celebrated. Yeah, and when you say Timbaland, Missy Elliott, M Missy Elliott Pharrell, their catalog of music, what? Like, <laughs> yeah. Songs that they touched, yeah. I'm, whoa. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And plus, so. you're, because you're from the area, it's like, hey, we're from the same place. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, so wait, so you're familiar with something in the water festival? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Is that close to you? Yeah. So, I mean, that's, so that's literally, so I live about three hours away from home now. I'm in Northern Virginia. Okay. Um, and Virginia Beach is like Southern. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I saw like the beginning of something in the water and like yeah. how it stirred up and how it became this huge thing. And uh, I remember the, the first, well, this past year, I think they weren't able to do it, but the, the first year. Yeah. It was huge. Like Jay Z showed up, and like all these big name artists. And I'm yeah. like, man, I should have went. Like I didn't go. Um, <laughs> so there's no question. The next time they're able to do something in the water, I'll be there and hopefully performing. Yeah, I actually heard about that festival because I'm in New York, and I actually signed up to be a volunteer. Mm. Back 
2019. And then I got that email, oh, you know, everything shut down. Like you, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, that'd be so cool. Like I'd make a trip yeah. down there. Like I would just like, I don't know, scan tickets or something. I'm like, just to be there and experience exactly. <clears throat> all that incredible music because you never know who's going to get pulled on stage. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, the things that Pharrell does for the city, uh, I appreciate. I mean, he, he's definitely kind of leading the way and for him to pull together a festival that huge yeah. in the area. Um, yeah. He, you know, he's, he's going to go down in history for Virginia Beach. So that's yeah. good stuff. Awesome. So in 2017, you were on season 13 of NBC's The Voice. Yeah. What did you pick There's Nothing Holding Me Back by Sean Mendez for your blind audition? So, man, good question. Uh, so there, the things that people don't see is that there are a lot of auditions that lead up to what you actually see on TV. Yeah. And you hope that you're actually going to be shown on TV because, you know, some, some people aren't necessarily, you know, fortunate enough to have their audition shown or they'll get montaged. So, Right. Kind of quick. Um, so going through the process, I was literally floating back and forth between pop and R&B. Mm -hmm. I was only singing the top 100 songs because that's just kind of the space that I was in. Yeah. And I felt like it would just be a bit fresh um, to do those songs and put my own twist on it. Mm -hmm. So um, when the time came and I made it to like, it was, they pick like 100 people out of the bunch, like out of the thousands that audition to actually audition for the judges. And um, when the time came for me to select a song, the show actually provides you with the list of um, songs that you can kind of look at and choose from. Mm -hmm. And strategically, I knew that it's going to be good for me to infuse R&B into pop. Yeah. So um, Shawn Mendes was kind of like, he still is, but he was, he was really kind of like peaking at that point. He had Mercy that came out, Nothing Holding Me Back. And um, so I went with that song. Since it, I don't think I had, I don't think it was performed in one of these competition so shows yet. So yeah. I probably was, I probably was the first person to do it on the, like, you know. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's, that's important and, uh, though. Like you, yeah. and that's the cool thing about the voice is like, you're not doing the real version. You're like, you have your own spin on it. Right. Yeah. So when I did that, I kind of just put my own thing on it. And now I kind of have uh, friends that say like, I can't unhear your version of it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, your version nice. the one that we all hear now. Yeah. <laughs> So during that blind audition, you had Adam Levine, Miley Cyrus, and Jennifer H Hudson. They all turned their chairs for you. Why did you end up picking Team Adam? Like that must have been a very like pressure filled situation. Yeah. So I mean, to be real, I never, I never imagined turning that many chairs. Yeah. Um, not to doubt myself, but like I know that it's uh, heavy competition. I know that the judges have what they're looking for to you know put on their team. And um, when I got three chairs to turn, and then even Blake was like, I didn't turn because my team is full. Right. Um, like, oh, wow. Okay. Like, now I kind of have, a, like, a difficult decision to make. Um, I knew going into it, um, I was going to either pick uh, Adam or Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, um, Jennifer has a background in doing cruise ships. She had been on a singing competition herself. Right. And I've kind of been able to see her journey and, like, you know, she has like that, she has a Broadway background, like, you know, like when she did Dream Girls and yeah. it, that kind of like fit the mold for me. Um, with Adam though, you know, he's in a group. He um, is the front man in the group. He, you know, has pop, but also some songs with the R&B influence, but he's done um, like, a, like a, a pop rock type of thing. So he mm -hmm. has like a mixture of genres and he's just Adam Levine. So yeah. <laughs> I kind of like, you know, uh, and I, with Miley, I was kind of worried that she wouldn't necessarily get me. Yeah. Uh, and I think that she actually did. So I was in that moment, I was really considering all three. Right. And um, I looked over at my family and I'm like, who do I choose? And they're like, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so I just, I went with my gut. Yeah. I went with who I felt would make me the most comfortable throughout the entire process. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I feel like Adam was kind of a bro. Like, yeah. you know, he, he didn't, like, make me feel nervous or stress me out or anything like that. So I went with him, and the, it was a good choice. He seems like a really chill dude. Yeah, he is. I always say he, he's a, a chill guy who happens to sing and happens to be a superstar. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, what was it like working with him? Oh, it was nice. Yeah, he, um, he's, like, he's full of energy. You can tell he has a lot of experience with the show. I mean, he did the show for many seasons. Mm -hmm. um, so that level of comfort in his position and, like, kind of coaching I liked and I also liked that he um really let me kind of do my thing he like trusted what I brought to the table yeah. and um he would just kind of like drop little nuggets here and there mm -hmm. but uh you know a couple of times he's like no you got it I'm not even going to tell you anything just go just do your thing 
Yeah. And, um, that was that was good coaching. So yeah, and I think that's cool because as artists, sometimes people try to say like, "Oh, you have to do this," and you're like, "I don't want to do that. Like, I'm feeling this." Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. It's, he gave you that free reign to just like, okay, Brandon, do your thing. I trust you. Rock it, and then I'll like throw in a couple pointers. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. What surprised you about your time on The Voice? Um, I think that what surprised me was my mentality while I was there. <clears throat> and I always talk, I always go back. I made some pretty decent, like some pretty good friends while I was on the show. Yeah. And um, they like joke me and they're like, yeah, you were like pretty intense, like, <laughs> just in general. <laughs> and, like, I'm like, I had a, I, I personally had a lot going on during that yeah. time. Like my wife and I were engaged. We were actually going to get married in like a week. Um, oh. like, like, well, the, we got married the week of the wine auditions. Wow. So, yeah. So there was a lot going on with that still, like wedding planning. Um, and I just have a very like competitive spirit. I always say like music is my sport. Mm -hmm. So, um, I felt there was a bit of a shift in me though, in the process. And I had to step back with me having experience of being on the X Factor right. and like remind myself, like, you need to actually really enjoy this experience. Like this is the once in a lifetime thing you know, make like, you know, make memories, make friends and enjoy what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that once I did that, um, I really started to kind of like, um, in, like, uh, like, like what I was doing. I think before I was like, just like overthinking everything so much. And yeah, and I, I happened to in the battles, I had a really good partner. Mm -hmm. um, and she was just like, a, like a good time with like a good person. So a lot of good energy. So I think that my level of intensity and competitive competitiveness kind of surprised me, but right. also surprised myself to kind of be able to pull it back and, mm -hmm. um, you know, enjoy it. Yeah. Cause I think like, I mean, I can't imagine singing in front of like four superstar judges. Like that's gotta be so nerve wracking. And then when you see their faces and they're talking to you, you're like, is this like, is this actually happening to me? And then like in the same room with some of these people, then they bring guest judges in and you're like, Whoa, like this is yeah. crazy. So like, I see why like, it's like, it's hard to be in the moment because you're just like, oh my God, but like someone's going to win this competition. Yeah. We're all yeah. going to get off. Like, that's the crazy thing about it is there's so many talented people on these shows and it's like, I know, but like they, you know, they throw amazing singers off and it, that's yeah. the thing about it. Yeah. And, you know, kind of like what you were just saying, like the, the further you get in the competition, the more it kind of starts to click, like. I could, I could win the voice, you know, like I could be the person like who wins the show. And yeah, um, that's kind of a lot of pressure. But like you said, um, I knew that someone great was going to win and a lot of great people were going to go home. And, right. you know, that kind of like kept me a, a level a little bit in knowing that like, it's nothing to question um, talent and ability. Right. It's literally, you know, what was looked for, you know, the, the tough decision that the judges had to potentially make that day and um the the purpose really of the show is the experience yeah. and to be able to have the the world see who you are mm -hmm. and to get that you know that push into the industry so um yeah yeah that's so important because there's so many people from the voice that i've interviewed on this show and it's like i wouldn't have like known you guys if you weren't on that show like and then yeah. the youtube the youtube um numbers on the the voice auditions and the battles yeah. You're like, whoa, like three million people have seen this video. And then like yeah. people from other countries reach out to you and they're like, I'm such a huge fan. It's like <laughs> so awesome. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's kind of like, you know, becoming um a celebrity overnight a little bit, you know, and it is it is a little um it is it is a it's a, a, tr a little bit of a transition you kinda have to go through. Right. Like you said, people know who you are or like you know, just last week, nobody was on my Instagram, but now all of a sudden, you know, people are like, I love you so much. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's a pretty cool feeling. So yeah, um, and it's like yeah. trying to keep that momentum because, right, like, I mean, somebody could be on like season seven of The Voice and do a mm -hmm. phenomenal job. And then you're like, oh my God, I love that person. Where, where'd they go? Right, exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because like it's over before you know. No, even if you won The Voice, like, yes. it's kind of like, okay, so where are some of these past winners at? Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That happens, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in December, you released your first EP, Scripted, and it just mm -hmm. won Best Pop Album at the 2021 Whammy Awards. So congrats! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. What do you hope your fans will take away from this album? 
So I hope that uh, my fans will get a taste of the type of music that I'm going to create. Mm -hmm. uh, it really is the perfect blend of pop and R&B yeah. and um, meaningful lyrics. And, right. um, you know, I just, that's who I am going to be as, who I'm going to be as an artist and as a songwriter. And um, I hope that everybody's just, you know, down for the ride because I have more music coming. So I'm excited about it. Yes. Can you give us any um, exclusive, like when something's going to drop, like a single or a video or a collaboration? Yeah. Um, so I'm looking at, I'm releasing new music, like beginning of summer. Okay. And um, I'll probably kick it off with, you know, a single. Um, I'm back and forth with the approach of how I'd like to release it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm thinking of potentially having a 10 song album mm -hmm. and releasing each song as a single every two months. Awesome. And, um, so yeah, I'm sorry, sorry, every two weeks. Every but two that's weeks. cool though. <laughs> yeah. Like, sometimes you think of an album and it's only like two or three songs become single, but like I think the single thing is really amazing because yeah. then like, oh, the, my first single, oh, my second single. And then yeah. you're like, whoa, this is awesome. Yeah, just kind of giving people like back to back, like people wait patiently for new music, you know, so if I could give them, you know, visuals and, you know, songs every two weeks, and then at the end of those, that you have a 10 song album that you can listen to, yeah. um, you know, in its full duration, I think that would be a pretty cool approach. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. that's awesome. Yeah. So what was it like recording the album in quarantine? Like, how was that for you? <laughs> yeah, so I actually, I started recording the album in the studio, like going mm -hmm. and so I draft at home and get everything done, get all the vocals laid down and have the sessions ready um, with like BGVs, lead vocals. Right. And then from there, I'll go to the studio and lay down final vocals. Mm -hmm. And that's how it started. Um, this first song that I did, that I recorded on the album was Cliche. Mm -hmm. And um, Cliche was fully recorded. And then uh, pandemic hit, quarantine, oh. shut down. So I, um, I had to kind of like step up my, my in-home setup and, you know, like got on YouTube and like kind of watched some like, how do you make it sound like, you know, I want, the way I want it to sound. Yeah. I ended up having to re-record all of the vocals on Cliche because they just didn't match right. what I was doing for the rest of the songs because my mic changed. So, but what actually ended up happening was it was such an intimate experience, uh, like kind of going through frustrations with myself mm -hmm. and, you know, I learned a lot about myself and I don't think that I want to record in the studio if I don't have to, because it is, it is really nice to be able to have that um, level of intimacy with myself. Or if I'm working with someone here at home, I don't have, I'm not pressed for time on the clock, like, you know, yeah. worrying about re redoing anything. And I, now I know how to engineer and record myself so that when I do go to the studio, I can, I can communicate with that engineer and let him or her know, this is how I want it to sound. Click this button, go to this, you know, mm -hmm. plug in, things like that, so. I think that's amazing because quarantine, like when this happened about a year ago, no, I, I mean, like, what did we think? Like it was gonna be a couple months, like, yeah. like oh, maybe Labor Day, like things will clear up. And then I'm like, yeah. wait, no, this is like for the long haul. So I think it's so awesome that yeah. you YouTube and you were like finding out how to do things and you, set up your own thing at home because now you're so comfortable with it. So you're right. If you do go into a studio, you're like, no, I want to do this. Like, can I just like, you know, touch the board for a second? Like I want right. levels like this. And like, it's, it's really cool to have that background. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So you said this a little bit earlier, but I also want to touch on this. You and your wife are expecting, mm -hmm. she's doing May. Yes. What will you teach your daughter about music? So um, I really want her to love it first. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just have it, I'll have it around her. Um, but that was a, a really good part of my experience in that, like, I fell in love with it first. It wasn't forced on me. Right. And then I made the decision to get serious about it. Mm -hmm. And I really want that to be the case for her. But she will, you know, like, be around it. I'll have the piano around her and, like, you know, kind of, like, start teaching her, you know, little different notes and stuff like that or I'll definitely sing around her and then from there I'm hoping that that will spark some type of interest and we can build a bond in that yeah and I think that's cool because when you grow up in a musical household it's just different like when <laughs> yeah. whether you're my singer or whether like <laughs> certain records are being played all the time like you remember those times when you were like five and you're like oh my gosh I just remember when I was five and I was in the car and Michael Jackson was on the radio and like it brings you back like you yeah. 
those moments. Just like, I don't remember anything else when I was five, but I do remember being in the car and listening to that song. Yep, it's the power of music right there. Yeah, it's so <laughs> awesome. So what <clears throat> art or genres of music have you been listening to during this quarantine? Wow. Um, so I, of course, like I, I'm an R&B pop head, um, yeah. but um, oddly enough, I've been like tapping into like the different NPR, like tiny desk performances. Yeah, they're awesome. and they've had, yeah. And they've had like a lot of a mixture of artists. You'll get anything from like a hip hop artist to, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, <clears throat> like pop rock, different things like that. So um, yeah, that's kind of like been the source of like me, you know, maybe picking up different sounds and listening to different artists from that. Right. And then going in and actually listening to their full bodies of work. So. Any specific performances that stuck out to you? Like, like are these people that have been around for 20 years or are these people that like maybe are newer artists that you're listening to? Yeah, newer artists for sure. Like Jacob Collier, um, listen to his, um, listen to Snow Allegra's performance. Mm -hmm. And um, I listened to Rick Ross's performance too, um, just because I, just, I think his music is fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, Rick Ross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then her, her also, she did a, um, a Tiny Desk performance, which was great. So... Yeah. Uh, and then just like kind of seeing the musicians that are playing behind them. And, right. Like, be, like some of them like go and play for someone else. I think Justin Bieber just did one too, which was really good too. So. Yeah. yeah. I love when they do the tiny desk co concerts and then they have all these musicians behind them because yeah. you see your focus on the lead singer, but then you're like, okay, so who are the background singers? Who's that bass? Yeah. Singer? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what song do you wish you wrote and why? <laughs> Um, I, um, so I have an album that I wish I wrote and I okay. always go and say the album is, <laughs> like, yeah, so I'll say the song, but like, so the song I wish I wrote was When I Was Your Man by Bruno Mars. Okay. I wish I wrote that song. Yeah. Um, cause it just tells such a story. It's like so well done start to finish. And it's one of those songs that will never go away. It's a classic. Um, but the album that I wish I wrote, because I always joke and say this album was actually written for me. They just didn't know it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was out his journals by Justin Bieber. Um, that's it, I think he released it in like 2013. Yeah. And that, like his uh, like aren't like full blown R and B like introduction. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really where he um, his heart is as an artist. And that wasn't necessarily where he started. Right. But that was him being able to like tap into that. And it's just such a well done album mm -hmm. from start to finish. So yeah. Yeah, because he's a good mix of both pop and R and B. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the best advice you've ever been given? Mm. I would say um, the best advice I've been given is, and this is, again, it's cliche, but it is real. Um, just like really stay true to yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was when I um, was in, in for sure. We had a pretty tough um, exit from the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were kind of shoe-ins in the competition. And so when we were um, booted off of the show, it was kind of a surprise. And we, to this day, feel like it was because we were pulled in different directions mm. by people in the background. And um, we didn't stay true to who we were in that last performance. And you never want to walk, get off stage and walk away with any regrets. Yeah. And um, of course, we were able to roll and keep going and you know do our thing afterwards. But um, if we had stayed true to ourselves and done with what we knew we really wanted to do mm -hmm. um who knows the outcome would have been a bit different but at the same time we might maybe not, not have learned a lesson in that moment too so right. uh, yeah stay true to who you are and um it's just 10 times more comfortable to just be who you are and people will, will receive that and know that it's genuine yeah i think when you listen to music and you and you hear the emotion in those lyrics mm -hmm. do a different way and yeah. you're like that artist is being true to themselves. Like they're not just doing something because someone told them to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell the difference. Definitely. Not unless someone's a great actor. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. What advice would you give to other musicians during this quarantine? Um, give yourself grace. And that's something that I work, I work on as well. It's yeah. okay. It's okay if um, a day goes by, and you, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily feel like writing or recording. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, go hard the next day and, you know, stick to that, have discipline, but at the same time, really allow yourself to just 
uh, like enjoy the experience, have fun with it, relax, it's okay, it's not a rush. And um, really this is like for independent artists because um, that's, you know, that's where I am. And um, a lot of times we are like the people who are like kind of in charge of what gets done, the productivity yeah. um, and things like that. So give yourself grace and mm -hmm. know that it's all good, it's okay, it's nothing to stress out about. That's the advice I'll give. Yeah, because we, we can have up and down days and some days you might be like, oh my God, like I'm so creative right now. And then the next day you might wake up and you're like, I'm just not, I just, I'm yeah. not. <laughs> yeah, and that's all right, that's human, that's okay. <laughs> we, all, we all are feeling up and down because we're still stuck in the house. So. Exactly, yes, exactly. <laughs> so Brandon, <laughs> tell everybody that's listening right now where they can find you on all social media platforms, plug everything that you're on. Cool. Yeah. So I, um, I, I know you pinned me on uh, my comment there. So yeah. if you, uh, you know, click over on my, um, on my, my bio, um, you'll see a link there and it has all of my social media outlets that being Facebook, um, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram. I'm on TikTok, but not really. I just kind of locked in my name. I haven't gotten into the TikTok world. Yeah. So we'll see. I, I don't know if I'm going to, we'll see, but you, well, I think you need to. You think I, so? Yeah, okay. because the thing is, I I mean, I do talk to quite a few different musicians. Yeah. And, and like, you can do like a 15 second clip. Like, you could literally do like one or two lines of a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. people love it, especially with music, because yeah. like music is so important at a time like this. So you can do either a 15 second clip on TikTok or a 60 second clip. And then you can like edit your voice and like do all this right. other stuff. And TikTok for musicians is killer. You got to get in there. Okay, I'm I'm gonna listen to you. I'm gonna I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Yeah. And there's other people <laughs> other seasons of the voice mm -hmm. that are rocking it right now on TikTok. Yeah, I know. I, so I'm I'm a TikToker who like scrolls and looks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, yeah, you guys are doing it. You're killing it. Yeah. So um yeah, we'll see. I I'm definitely going to this year that was on my list. So I'm gonna jump into that and start learning about it and kind of figure out my my rhythm with that. So Yeah. Very cool. So for everybody that's watching this right now how can people support you as an artist yeah so um i would say purchase merch and music yeah um that's like kind of the best way that you can support me and i say the word purchase intentionally <laughs> so um you know as independent artists a lot of us don't blatantly say but and people don't know this because we're not saying it yeah but when people stream our music it takes a lot of streams for us to like feel it financially. Right. Um, whereas if you would have like to go, like if you would go to like Walmart or Target and actually like buy our album, right. um, like back in the day how it used to be, um, artists would like be able to reap the benefits a lot more. So the way to do it now is actually go to iTunes uh, and purchase the album for, I think it's $10 or something like that. And yeah. the, the impact that I will feel on my end is 10 times greater than like streaming. But if you decide to stream, I'm good with it. But I will say the best way to support buy merch and buy the album. I think that's so important for people to, to know though, because everyone has like Spotify and Apple Music and Pandora and Tidal and like all these other, right? Streaming things, because it's just an easy thing, but it's like, we need artists to tell us how to support them. Like, okay, I have a live stream coming up. Please make sure to be there. It's, you know, here's the details, tell your friend, share the music. And it's just like yeah. getting the word out. Yeah, yeah. And the merch is important too, because it's like, Somebody wears a shirt, somebody wears a hat, and they're like, who's that? It's like, oh, yeah. I out. He's awesome. Yep, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, if, if we were able to perform live, you know, I'll be there, have a little, have a little stand selling merch. Yeah. You know, signing posters. But so these are just things that we kind of have had to, you know, pivot with. Yeah. And that's the best way to support. So mm -hmm. yeah. So do you have any like live streams coming up? Have, have businesses opened like venues in your area? Yeah. So I I'm so I just um, did the Cherry Blossom Festival, which is um, a big DC festival here. And it was it was different. I did it virtually. I'll actually post that performance soon. Cool. Um, but so a lot of my gigs that are like kind of coming up are like in a virtual space. Um, and then I'll start doing some like major events and weddings later on this year. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, I, I started doing um, like Instagram live series, like where I'll do like a 30 minute performance. Yeah. And I think I'll pull that back and start doing that once a month because people really like that. Mm -hmm. um, but right now I'm kind of focusing on my YouTube channel mm -hmm. and like creating there and having, um, you know, uh, 
content that people can look at, you know, continuously. So yeah, I think the IG lives are so cool because yeah. I've noticed with musicians that I follow, I love when they go live, even if it's for just ten minutes. Like yeah, yeah. like ten minutes, hey, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. It's the only kind of like live music that I can get, like I'm about it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so and I sometimes I do that too. I'll jump on 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 IG live when I'm just practicing in my in my my room or yeah. Um, if I'm writing and I just want to take a break just to talk to people and tell them like where I am, I'll do that from time to time too. So yeah, very cool. Well, yeah. that's all the questions that I have for you, but you're cool. gonna sing some songs for us. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna sing two songs from the EP. Um, the first song was the single off of the EP called "Need Someone," mm -hmm. um, and this song was co-written um, by um, by myself and then my good friend Grayson King, and he also produced the song. Mm -hmm. So um, that one, and then uh, the next song that I'll do is Dream, the one that you uh, pulled lyrics from. Yeah. And um, that one was uh, written by um, a producer named Walt, and uh, sorry, produced by Walt, and I wrote it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to jump in, get started. Do your thing. All right, cool. Remember, he said he would be here always. Kiss and still lingers in your bed, and it's been five days. Mm -hmm. But you say that you're better off reaching for Laying in the empty bed when you know that he's gone, know that he's gone, gone. Remember everything he said just to hurt you. Hoping that your phone would ring when nobody is there. But I can tell you need someone. Yeah, I can tell you need someone. Yeah, yeah. Baby, you need someone. Yeah, I can tell you, I can tell you. He chased you for months, you knew it wasn't right. Ignore your feelings, knowing he gave you all the signs. Yeah. But you say that you're better off reaching for me. Yeah, laying in your empty bed when you know that he's gone, know that he's gone, gone. Remember everything he said just to hurt you. Hoping that your phone would ring when nobody is there. But I can tell you need someone. Yeah. I can tell you need someone, yeah, yeah, baby, you need someone. I can tell you, I can tell you, I can tell you need someone, yeah, I can tell you need someone, yeah, yeah. Baby, you need someone, yeah. I can tell you, I can tell you. And after all the fights, I never understood why I stay when you knew he was no damn good for you. You said that you pushed through, I doubt you never knew. This pain will be just know I'm here for you. You need someone, yeah. Oh, cause I can tell you need someone, yeah, yeah. Baby, you need someone, you need someone, you need someone. Baby, you need someone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I can tell you need someone, yeah, yeah, 
Baby, you need someone, yeah. I can tell you, I can tell you. How does the old school fade on that one? I love it. <laughs> Guys, give it up for me. It was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just love that song. It's a good vibe. Oh, yeah. It's so fun. Yeah. All right. So the next song I'll do to finish things out, um, this one is near and dear to me because it's just like very genuine lyrics. Um, this one's called Dream. Wake up, the clock starts running, the time when dreams come true, the time that I have you in my life, a dream come true, you are my motivation, you are my lifeline, you are why you'll never stop. Yes, you are, you are my dream. You are my dream. Yeah, yeah. You like will be full of blessings, I know, cause God sent you the time that I have you, yeah, not for granted, a dream come true, you are my motivation, you are my lifeline, you are why I'll never stop. Yes, you are, you are my dream. You are yeah, my dream. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, you are. Yes, you are, 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 yes, you are. Oh, no. Who And I want you to know I love you. I want to see you climb mountains Cause you are my motivation You are my lifeline You are why I'll never stop, no Cause you are, you are my dream, yes, you are. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Yes, you are, yes, you are. Oh. came out in December and if you see yep. click the link below in his bio listen and purchase merch so right before um, we take this Q&A when does your Charlie live stream start 
When does that live stream start? Uh, I think he, he might kick off at, I think he kicks off at nine. I, I think so. But um, yeah, I think he's doing like an hour or so of it. So. Okay. Well, I don't want to keep you too long because I know like you love him. And <laughs> I think it's all good. Some questions, but like I wanted to be mindful. I was like, is it nine or nine thirty? So I'll definitely keep an eye on the clock and I won't have you too late. No, cool. please. I want to, I want to be here. This has been, this has been so much fun. So this is good. Oh, yay. <laughs> Any questions that you guys have for Brandon, feel free to put them in the chat below. Looks like one just popped up. What instrument would you like to learn next? So you see this bad boy in the back here? Yes, um, I see. Right now, yeah, right now he's there for show. Um, oh! <laughs> <laughs> so that's the next, that's the next instrument. Um, I'm finding it not, is not too difficult um, just because I, I play the piano. Yeah. So um, being able to kind of pick up chords and knowing how it should sound. Right. But the finger placement and like me yeah. having thousands on my fingers, that's a little new. So the guitar is next. It's one of those things where you're like, ow, that hurts. I like press yeah. the string too hard. Yeah. And apparently it's supposed to be that way. I don't, I don't get it. it. Is. And then you'll have like these like bumps on your finger and you're like, yeah. oh, it's, like hard and weird. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what international venue would you like to perform at? Uh, Staples Center and uh, uh, Madison Square Garden. Awesome. Yeah, those are legendary venues. Yeah. Love it. So I, but I love LA, so I would say probably, I know you're in New York, so not to make New York <laughs> second. Hey, hey, LA, New York, they're kind of the same thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, go they're to cousins. They're cousins for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they're totally different places, though. Like, New York is like gritty and, you know, in your face, and LA is kind of just not, but everything's. Yeah. And but you know the music, the music speaks for itself. And there's so many incredible music venues, big and small, and in both of those cities. Yeah, for sure. Who are some of your inspirations? Oh, uh, this is one of my good, my really good friends, Coest. He's a great artist, by the way. Everybody, listen to his music. Um, oh. He's a, he's a beast. Um, so some of my inspirations, uh, definitely. <clears throat> Just kind of going through the list again. I know I keep repeating these people, but it's who I listen to. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, Luther Vandross, Usher, Brian McKnight, um, Bruno Mars, Charlie Puth. Yeah. I didn't even say Bruno. Um, oh, Bruno. Okay. Like, I, you know what? I knew yeah. you loved Bruno. I, you didn't even need to say it. Like, I just knew. <laughs> you could tell? Of course. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm a Bruno stan, for sure. Yeah. And I'm, like, ex excited about the Anderson Pack album that they're oh. <laughs> So I'm waiting for that date, so. Yes, Anderson Pack. Oh, that <laughs> song with oh, him and Bruno. Yeah. What? Because yeah. they're both amazing in their own right. And then they came together. I'm like, oh, this is just everything we needed. Yeah, it's a good vibe. Like, really nice groove. It's nice to be able to see um, Bruno do uh, like he really wants to. Like, it's nice to see that, like, there's artists like Lady Gaga, too, where we kind of saw them start and then we saw where they you know, really wanted to go. And right. Bruno is kind of another one of those artists. Um, so I'm excited to kind of listen to this new album. I love it. So I would like to learn a little bit more about your experience on cruise ships. What was that like? Oh, yeah. So I did um, cruise ships. That was my first performance job out of college. Mm -hmm. um, so I studied music and English in college. And I came off and like, okay, um, I need to work. So what do I do? <laughs> yeah. So I started auditioning for um, military bands. And I'm like, oh, cool, you can be in the military and get paid to perform. And like, you yeah. know, so I didn't know about that. And um, so I went on like what was what I called like an audition spree. Mm -hmm. So I auditioned for like multiple military bands. I auditioned for a couple of Broadway musicals and um, auditioned for cruise ships. Mm -hmm. And I went, out, I went into this cruise ship audition with like so much confidence. And I like, um, I sang a few songs and like, but before then, if you're outside of an audition and you can hear auditions, Right. Um, it's a little intimidating because either people are like killing it and you're intimidated or they're sending them home. And <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of sending home. Like people were getting no's left and right. Like, yeah. I'm like, oh man, okay, I'm just going to go in here, sing. I had drove like an hour out to audition and they let me get to song three. Awesome. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right. So then after I finished the, set, the song, the third song, they're like, um, what's your dance experience? And I'm like, I'm a great dancer. Mm -hmm. And the truth be told, I'm not a great dancer. Um, but I just like, you're like, yeah. And, um, take it. <laughs> they're like, you know, she's like, on a level of one to 10, where would you put yourself? I'm like, I'm a 10. I'm an 11. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, all right, well, I want you to do like a relevant pont tone, say, or something like that. And like, I'm like, 
that's not gonna happen. Oh, I was a little overconfident. <laughs> I'm probably more like a two. <laughs> so um, that was kind of a good laugh. And um, yeah, from there, they selected me to be a lead male vocalist on the cruise ship. So you're in a production cast of um, 12 people, eight dancers, four singers. Mm -hmm. But the singers are pushed to dance as well. Like we have to full out perform, do yeah. costume changes, learn full productions. And um, that really helped me out as far as stage presence mm -hmm. and just like confidence on stage and being able to like move and like right. um, be confident in myself in that way. Because before I'm kind of like, you know, rock here and there and like sing. The confidence yeah. is in the voice, but to be able to be confident in movement too. Um, yeah, I, I made really good friends on the ship and it was nice to be able to travel and perform. Um, but literally when I was on the ship, that was my preparation because I had told myself I was gonna be on the voice. So yeah. there would be nights where I would book the auditorium on the ship, um, uh -huh. like at midnight when nobody was in there. Yeah. I mean, the sound guy would be in there for like an hour or two and I would just perform on stage. And sure enough, a few months later, I was on The Voice. I love that. That's so awesome. And like the confidence, like you said, when you're performing and costume changes, you're dancing, you're this, it's like, that's amazing. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah I think like if most people just went up and like sang, like did an open mic, they mm -hmm. just like, oh, what do I do with my hands? Do I put my hand in my pocket? Like, what do I do? Like, you know, it, it's gotta be like an awkward thing, but like, right, yeah that confidence like it's just a whole like and take up the stage or do some kind of movement or even just hold the mic yes yeah like a nervous person or you can hold the mic like a boss exactly yeah for sure and people see it all like people can read it right yes. away know if you yes. are confident and comfortable or not yeah <laughs> yep. awesome so that's all the questions that we have for this evening and i know you want to see charlie so i want to get you to that <laughs> any final words for the room brandon um, well, for sure, I appreciate everyone who hung out here. This has been great, Ashley. Thank you for reaching out to me and having me on your show. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan, for sure. I'm going to continue to watch. And oh, thank you. Hopefully, you and I can stay in touch. But thank you so much for having me. Thank you, everybody who tuned in. Yes. I just want to say thank you so much for agreeing to be on my show. You were so excited when I reached out to you. You're like, oh, my God, I'm so excited. I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm so excited that you're excited. So. <laughs> yeah conversation thank you for sharing all your music and your honesty with us uh we look forward to all the new music to come guys if you don't already please make sure to follow brandon click the link in the bio listen to the ep purchase the merch donate like just do it up like all support of all of great musicians just do it just do it what are you doing exactly. and guys if you don't already please make sure to follow me i'm ashley live this is vibing with ashley live and thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight Brandon, thank you so much. Thank you. Nice. Bye-bye.